Hello, good evening and welcome to GPL Express here on TV3. My name is Juliet Bewa and over the next half hour we will help you decode all the biggest conversations around the Ghana Premier League. It's been a busy week already while the clouds gather in Kumasi in Accra one club is having a melodrama of its own with its coaches. There's more here to look forward to. Welcome. Express, there is a growing turbulence at Kumase Asante Kotoko. It is a never ending twist that got heated this week. We dig into all of that. Now, the Ghana Premier League is so young in the day, yet littered with flares of hostility. We will walk you through that. And the backroom merry-go-round at Great Olympics means so many stories from some of the people affected in the process. There's more in the next 30 minutes. Now, we start off at Accra Great Olympics, where a musical chess of coaches has already seen three people come in and out of the club's top backroom job. It's been a gushing stream of backroom uncertainty all season at Accra Great Olympics. With enough drama already, the club is still providing more scenes to a story that never gets old. Less than halfway into a season that has seen them fairly okay and managing life at the bottom of the table, the club's fortunes hasn't been made better by the chaos. With two coaches out and a third already at the helm, there's every reason to suggest the club is looking for redemption to salvage a situation that could go bad. First, it was Prince George Kofi who resigned due to what he said were abuses on his person. He was replaced by his assistant at the time, Seth Hoffman, who recorded a win, two defeats and a draw before being shown the exit, paving the way for current Anna Walker to be appointed. So far, Olympics have recorded three wins, two draws and six losses in a league whose leading contenders have proven too tough. Walker's job in the coming days will be to help steer the team onto safer waters and possibly survive the competitiveness in this season's league. What we are not setting off is if he gets to enjoy some stability to achieve all of this. Now, still staying with this subject, an Olympic story started with one man who resigned over what he said were attacks on him by the club's supporters. Prince George Kofi let us in on the circumstances surrounding his exit. Uh, uh, league match against Wafa. Some, you know, I would say a section of the supporters were not, you know, uh, happy. And for that matter, the expressed their reservations, you know, they made a lot of utterances and uh, as a result one of them actually attacked me, he, he assaulted me physically. Uh, even in victory, uh, some of them, uh, you know, made submissions, you know, I would say negative, you know, submissions or utterances, yeah, to that effect. Some experienced players were not being used, you know, by virtue of injuries, you understand? And you see, uh, I expected those uh, uh, supporters to come to me or maybe talk to uh, management, uh, you know, to find out why those players were not being used. They didn't do that. And they just came out and started, you know, uh, you know uh, making such uh, uh, utterances. I don't think it's fair. Do you think the current Olympics team can do better in the season's league? Uh, they can do well. Provided they do things uh, the right way, they, they, they you know, use the right approach in their dealings. You know, uh, in modern day football, uh, you know, you always have to go with professionalism. I believe if they, 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 they go with it, they'll be able to, you know, you know, go places as far as the team is concerned. You're still watching GPL Express here 
on TV3. Now, in 1995, he rose to critical acclaim as part of Ghana's under-17 World Cup winning team. Years on, he remains an iconic part of the country's football history and has more than enough to share on the ongoing Ghana Premier League. Awudu Isaka. Audrey, thank you so much for your time here on GPL Express. You have been following the Ghana Premier League from afar. What are your impressions so far? I think so far so good. And if you watch how they are playing, I think it's not bad. And the love is showing a little bit, but not too high, like the way we expect. But what we need to do is we must pray to God that he should push our league to move forward. And the players too have to be serious for the business because football is a business. Ash Gold has, and that match was so good and I was so impressed. And at the same time, I was learned a lot about that game. It was not too good f f from some of the players. Their long passes were so bad. So I was sitting there and I said, Ash, so Ghana, this is how these guys are playing. Any player, if you go and watch second half, all the long passes were strong. Now, what do you make of the quality of the play so far with all the matches that you've seen? The talent is there, but they need quality or they need skills to add it. And some of the coaches, trust me, they don't have that skills. They only say two touches, one touch, but it's not good. As a footballer, you need to know a lot. Not only long passes. You need to know how to chest ball, how to head ball. You know, some, sometimes they play like, you know, the ball they are playing in Ghana now. If you, if you watch European soccer, when the, the European referees come to Ghana, every game we, they can get like um, 10 red cards in one game because the aggressive is too much. We say bring back the love. We have to show the love, not the, the crowd crowd. You know, you understand what I mean? So we have to move forward with that. In what areas do you think we can improve our game? We can't say we don't have enough. And we have to say we have, because Ghana is for us. At the same time, some of the guys, um, they need to learn a, a lot. And they need to learn more. Coaches have to teach them the skills more. We, we Africans, we have to do our Ghanaian skills. I know we have so many matches to go, but for you, which, which teams are your pick? This leg, eh? it's not easy because today, first, tomorrow, second. So, what I'll say about the leg is uh, I quite remember my prophet, Imane Badukobi, was prophesied that has, this year is House of Folk year. And people does not understand him. If somebody said this, uh, this year is your year, what you need to do is you have to work hard. And I think so far, has, they are coming gradually and they will make it. So I would with um, Accra had to book their form, not too stable. They seems to be floating and coming up, floating and coming up, and you still think they can win the Ghana Premier League? It can happen. They should fight hard. Kotoko is a fight, fight team, so they should fight. All right, thank you so much for your time here on GPLS. You're welcome, God bless you. Thank you. I would do Isaka there. You're still watching GPL Express here on TV3, still ahead. You're welcome back to GPL Express here on TV3. Now, this season's Ghana Premier League, despite being young, has recorded some match venue incidents that could possibly or potentially hurt the games being made. We have been joined in the studio by editor of Kotoko Express, that is Jerome Otre, who will help us talk through these happenings and will also pick his thoughts on the current happenings um, at Kumasi Asante Kotoko. Jerome, thank you so much for joining me here. Thank you for the opportunity. Um, we've seen some games, over 11 games played, but we've seen some flashpoints, um, troubles at match venues. What do you make of it? I think it's unfortunate. I mean, this is not something any one of us expects, particularly when there's a campaign to bring back the love. We don't have to do things that will create a problem for people if they want to come and watch the matches. So it's not something we should encourage. And I like the fact that the FA is working so hard to more or less nip those things in the bud. I mean, immediately these things happen, they try to come out and punish the offenders. So I was just about asking you if you think the FA has sent enough signal um, that these things don't have a place in our football. The signals can't be enough, but they, they, they certainly have to keep on doing it. Once 
those things spring up, they immediately have to come out and punish them. I mean, if, if, if we leave it like we were doing in the past, then there will be problems. But so far, the way they have gone, I think is good, but these things cannot be enough. I mean, discipline is something you will always have a problem trying to maintain. And I think that how they have started is good, and they will only have to do more. And now, we, we, just like we see on our screens, the, uh, the incident that um, got Kumasi Asante Kotko banned in uh, March week three yes. there, and I think they've learned some lessons out oh, of that. Of course. I mean, there's no way Kotoko is going to go back to those things that happened when we played Rukum Chelsea. They were unfortunate. I mean, it's not something anybody would even want to see happen again. Yeah, and um, also a lot is happening at um, Kumasi Asante Kotoko, and I'm sure you are the best person to <laughs> let us in. What can you tell us? Well, I mean, as, as we all know, the team has not been playing well. The last few matches have not gone well. The chairman of the club has not been happy with the way things have gone. He, he needed to tell the players something, and it's, it's just unfortunate that what he said to the players had to come into the public domain and then for people to uh, uh, pass comments that uh, some feel were not good. Others think that this, this is a club chairman who is putting in so much money. And then he needed to put his feet down and let the boys understand that the way things are going isn't the best. John, thank you very much. But still staying with Kumase Asante Kotko and Maxwell Kunedu has underscored the importance of this week's crisis meeting, saying the playing body agrees that they need to do more and do better. Been in this, and we, when players decide to do something out of their own will, sometimes it's better than even forcing them to do it. But we, as second care team leader, who said we have to give them that pressure at least to also know that uh, whatever they are enjoying here, they have to give back and give it in abundance. Toko, ye bi biama players, ye bi biama technical team. That's still a uh, performance, no. Then we need to look at ourselves again. Changes via the necessary changes via us. Yeah, yeah. Nothing no fun in human but That is why we, we met. Team no deserve it better than we are giving right now. We will bounce back, fight back, and get this team where it, it belongs. We are very serious. But moving away from that, are we seeing the kind of leadership and control a club of that magnitude should have? Gaios Nkansa, my colleague in Kumasi, spoke to some fans. Kotokono, nada ya Kumasi ya Shadereje, oba kotoko di nima ni dikuameda. Ba ize yehudi ya kotoko ye. So management ni players ni njana, odi wani tuamu zokrana dadi no kwawe ya kufi ada rehon eba kwakoda. Next team na se omo a omo a se um kra na e draw one one. And yes, a team no e se koto kono. Uwe mu o gan na hasia. Team ni e team biya aji di o gan na biya. And subo e se no mbobo no. Clearly, the fans are not happy and they are not pleased. Maxwell as well is not pleased. How do they get out of this, John? I think that's what the chairman has done. Make them understand that things are not going well. You need to get results and I'm happy even the fans I mean some of them clearly has also seen it and all that all that has to happen is the team must play to win and I am hoping that against Bichem United, uh, Bichem United on Friday night the team will be able to win two more or less calm nerves and see how we can build on from there yeah we'll be talking more about the Ghana Premier League after this break You're welcome back to GPL Express here on TV3 and still in the studio with me is Jerome Ochre. Jerome, we're looking forward to this weekend's yes. big matches yes. and um, week 12, we're excited about it. Yes. What games are you looking forward to? Oh, obviously Kotoko versus <laughs> the team United. I mean, we are, starting the, yes, we are starting the weekend with that. I, I think it's a game Kotoko must win. If the team is not able to win, it's going to create problems. I would also love to see how Hasso Folk fare against them in a sharks. Sharks are not doing too well. Hearts of Folk appear to be coming up and it will be lovely to see how they can overcome sharks in Accra. 
And I'm talking about Kumasi Asante Kotko. Let's take a look at their next five fixtures when they are done with um, Bichim United. Interesting um, fixtures up for them. They go to um, Karela, they go to uh, Elmina Sharks, and um, they play against Inter Allies and also Olympics as well, Jerome. Yes, uh, it, it is very clear that we would have to do something, I mean, dramatic, so as to come back as the fans wanted. The, the, the difficulty, and I was saying it this afternoon somewhere, that we will have to understand that now we are playing home away from home because, I mean, we're going to play in Accra and that s somehow would take some form of shine from our game. We, we would have to make sure we take advantage of uh, whatever Accra will give us and, 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 and try and win these matches. I, I don't think these are very difficult matches, but given how we are playing now, things are not good and that gives some form of discomfort, but we would have to really back up and see how things will pan out for us. And you, you've seen um, Adriana, their next five fixtures, Ashanti Gold, they're also breathing down the neck of some of the other teams there. They've got tough matches also coming up. Yes, I mean, Adriana would really have to work hard. I, I saw uh, Adriana Ashgold and, uh, was it Wafa? These are matches they will really have to. Adriana appears to have a very good form at home, but when they go away, things become difficult. Last time, they, they, they had Liberty thumping them. It was, it was one surprising result for yeah. me. And it's, it's something they would have to work on. And now, Brecum Chelsea as well. Um, Ken Faisal, 11 Wonders, Legon City's Wafa, and Media Maesi. And that will be a cracker. Absolutely. It is, it is one game that would really have a, a lot of eyes following. You know, Brecum Chelsea, for example, started very well. All of a sudden, that shine we saw of them was dimming. And I think these are matches they would have to... Uh, work on and see how they can recover. And um, we'll look at um, the next five fixtures for Media Mar. We can see on your screens um, they play Olympics, Ken Faisal, Eleven Wonders, and um, Legon Cities as well. I mean, the, uh, with no disrespect to the first four teams, I think these are teams Media Mar would, 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 would try and, and overcome. Brickham Chelsea is where I, I foresee some difficulty because of the form they have shown from the start of the competition. And um, 10 games or 11 games gone, but we'll be looking at their table, the top half, yeah. and also the struggling teams. <laughs> we know it's, it's early days yet, but yeah. um, Ashanti Gold, Media Maesi, Idiana, of course, so they, they are battling each other at the top. Yeah, it, it is no surprise for me because, I mean, these, these are the top teams, and you can clearly tell from their performance. Idiana has been so strong at home, Media Maesi has been strong at home, Ash Gold. You can say same for them. Brickham Chelsea started very well, but they appear to be coming down. The fact that there isn't much of a difference in terms of points between the top four or even the top five teams should tell us that there's a lot of competition out there to look out for. But um, importantly, the goals are coming in, yes. and um, we have to take a look at the top scorers. Absolutely. And um, we yeah. have Victoria Nadebayo in there. We have um, Yahaya Mohammed as well. We've got. Prince um, Ajman, Prince Sadu Kobna, and also Ibrahim Osman of Kim Faisal. Yes, and, and again, you can see the competition there. Yaya Mohammed very close to uh, Victoria Adibayo, just a goal difference between the two of them. Prince Ajman also having eight. And if you look at uh, Edu Kobna and Osman, also seven points, it, it goes to show that all these guys are doing very well. They are, they are neck to neck in some way. I would love okay. to see them score more and maybe have some Kotoko players coming into the top five <laughs> <laughs> as we go on. Interesting. <laughs> but now, for most clubs in the Ghana Premier League, match venues are more than physical um, structures. Where games are honored, they represent spiritual and also traditional connections the club tap into. For Dreams FC, the theater of dreams in Dewu has become a sacred oracle. As the Dewu Park, it was built by Seth Yabwa, the then bank ruler of Premier League side Dewu Youngsters. This facility has recorded so many memories and magical moments over the years that it has been in use. A lot, however, has changed. These days, it has taken on a new cloth, Dreams FC, founded in 2009 by current GFP president, Pet Okreku. Why the Theatre of Dreams? Well, uh, interesting. Two years ago, we wanted a name for this place when we decided to play our own games here. So I think in one of the meetings, we came up with different names. And the owner, who is now the president of the FA, said, oh, we are Dreams FC. It is now, it has become a dream 
for all almost all the, the 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 players of this club to taste Premier League football because it was our first appearance in the Premier League. Yeah. We needed a place. Now again, the we youngsters had been relegated for 18 years plus because they were relegated somewhere in 2000. So we needed a name that would be catchy, that will you know ring a bell, and then we also needed to take a look at you know something that will have a recall. So. Upon several deliberations, he came up with the name Theatre of Dreams. Fond memories that you've encountered here? Here? Um, I remember when we came here for the first time, uh, we played a game against Hatsu Folk. The then owner of Dell Youngsters, um, Setieboa, who is now the Tufohine of this um, traditional area, came here and when he entered the place, he said, he, he knelt in front of Ketu Kraku and said, thanks for bringing football back to my community. Dreams FC there. But Jerome, thanks so much for joining thank me you. here on GPL Express. Yeah, thank you. And a biggest thank you at home for watching us here on GPL Express. Join us same time next week. My name is Juliet Bilwa. Good night.